G'day guys, this episode is going to be a look at my RGB switch box which is finally complete and it's awesome. Just to uh, give you a little bit of background, um, when I first started collecting consoles um, I had a Master System and a NES and the Master System used RF and the NES used AV. Everything was great. I could connect the two uh, to the TV at the same time. Uh, then I picked up uh, a Super NES which was fine, I could use the TV's second AVN. Then I started to add Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, Saturn, handful of others, uh, and it started to sort of get out of hand. Um, I had VCRs with multiple AV inputs, um, and it was just getting to be a real mess. So I started to buy the little uh, mechanical AV switches. I bought mine from Dick Smith, they were you know, 20 bucks or so. They gave you a reasonable result, nothing real great. So, um, but it was working fine for then, for the time. But then I discovered how awesome RGB looks over composite. It just adds so much detail. It's hard to explain. Um, I've done another video on converting consoles to RGB, or rather uh, making RGB cables for them. And they connect using the uh, SCART interface. SCART switch boxes, they don't seem to get very big. Uh, the biggest that I was able to find were five input and they were quite expensive uh, for decent quality ones. Uh, you know, there were bigger ones with you know multiple ins and outs, um, and it just starts to get real sort of niche and uh, expensive if you go that way. So, the solution is obviously to build my own. Uh, I started to look for ideas on uh, AV switching uh, with solid state components. Um, I didn't like the idea of using, you know, dozens of relays. It would sort of uh, get bulky and noisy and, uh, you know, it's, it's a good idea, it could work. I know of um, one guy on the assembler forums uh, that's building one using relays and I'm sure it'll work just fine, and it'll be great. Uh, but I wanted to go the solid state route. Uh, so I found um, a tutorial written by Benjamin Heckendorn, or Ben Heck, as we call him, using um, Texas Instruments analog bus switch ICs. If you head over to the uh, Engadget article, I'll put a link in the description. It tells you all about that uh, full design, and I grabbed the components and built it, and it worked. So um, I took that idea and expanded it to uh, RGB. And that's how it all started. Uh, if you check out my channel, um, I've got two other videos there, uh, which are episode 17 and quick dip number 2, uh, which is the proof of concept for the AV switch and a little um, intro to the user interface. Uh, you can get more detail on how it's sort of functioning at a low level um, over the, in those videos. Uh, this video is going to be about the construction and about the operation, seeing the thing actually live. So, let's get into it. So, the uh, first thing I had to do was design the circuit board. I used a free piece of software called Eagle uh, to do that. And here's the layout here. Um, an electronics engineer is probably going to watch this and go, oh, what a rubbish layout. But, yeah, it does the job. Um, my goals were to keep power and switching away from the actual signal lines. And I think that the design does that uh, quite well. Um, the other criteria was that I needed to have um, a header for the LCD so I could unplug that if I wanted to and also um, a header to the in-system programmer for the Atmel chip um, so that I could tweak things later on if I wanted to. Uh, that's all there, that's all present and that's pretty much all there is to say. And now on to manufacturing the circuit board. So what we're looking at here is the printed circuit board being etched. It's ammonia per sulfate which reacts with the exposed copper and creates copper sulfate which is blue. Let's see it. Water, it actually started out clear, it's blue now. And so in 20 or maybe half an hour this should be a lovely printed circuit board for me to attach my bits and pieces to. I have to keep agitating it. Maybe I'll talk to it some more, get it really agitated. <laughs> so 
don't know if you can see it. See how there's dark patches there? That's where the copper is finally gone from those little sections of the board. So we're nearly there. I've been doing this for about 45 minutes now. Uh, the process is accelerated if you use hot water. But, um, well, it started hot, but it's cold now. So soon, very soon. Fetching is complete. And you can see. All that's left are the traces and all the copper that it removed has been converted into copper sulfate, which is the blue liquid at the bottom. And uh, that's the circuit board. Still has the, uh, the laser transfer stuff on it and I'll leave it that way until I'm ready to, uh, to go ahead and drill it. But you can see if you flip it over, you can see the copper the copper traces through there and uh, looks like it picked up some print <laughs> picked up some print off the, uh, the bit of paper I was resting on excellent oh yeah this bit up here uh, sometimes the uh, laser transfer process doesn't work 100% perfect um, and you just have to fix it up with a, a Nico pen or a sharpie or you know, permanent marker of whatever brand. Next phase is to drill and then solder. And here it is after the mask, the toner mask has been removed and the holes have been drilled. It should do the trick nicely. A couple of problems with it. The holes up here, apparently there wasn't quite as much pad around those holes as I would have liked so We'll fix that next time. Lessons learned. And um, some of these holes look like they've gotten really hot or something while I've drilled them. They've sort of discolored a bit. Uh, they've got burrs there. I need to clean them up with a with a countersink bit. That's no problem. A couple of bits here where it hasn't itched off for some reason. Pretty good for a first go though, I think. Now to populate it, I've uh, begun to place some components. There's a socket for the uh, Atmega chip, necessary capacitors, the clock crystal, and the uh, in circuit programming header. In case I want to change things later on, don't have to take anything out of the uh, out of the circuit. Awesome. Yeah, things got a little bit dirty thanks to those pads sort of disappearing, but. Uh, should be able to make do. But over here, the surface mount components are going on. The first one was uh, the chip that I was using for testing, so I was a little bit grubby. Uh, but the rest of them, I've just tinned pads. Should just be able to put the chips on and uh, heat them up. And make them stick. Gosh, it is so much harder without solder mask. Like a lot, lot harder. Alrighty. All the bus switches are mounted. Not my tidiest work, but I had to do it all by hand. No solder mask. Alrighty. Uh, the rest of the assembly phase is pretty uninteresting to watch, so I'll just show you a couple of photos of the progress of that first thing I did was cut out all the details on the back of the case gave me a, uh, a nice empty frame to screw a blank panel to which will have the scar plugs attached to it next thing was that I bogged up the front of the case to give a nice flat surface to paint and to attach the LCD and the buttons painted it all black painted the front black painted the top black and then I went ahead and attached all of the SCART, BNC and RCA sockets Finally, I attached a little circuit board with a sink separator circuit on it, just using the LM1881 sink separator IC. I flashed the control software onto the Atmega chip, connected it to my equipment, and then it was time to sit back and enjoy it. So, check it out. Okay, let's see it in action.
So uh, that's what uh, that's what you'll see on the LCD display. You can easily uh, flick through it uh, through the uh, choices by using the uh, the switch over here. So uh, what you'll see as you flick through the uh, the available choices is their name uh, and a little scroll bar like so. If you hold the button down, we'll scroll, scroll through them. Rolls around at the end. That's the user interface. As you can see, it's pretty much as I described in the previous video. Just a little bit more information there with the uh, larger display. So, let's uh, fire up the PVM. Going to set the unit to uh, Sega Master System. And there it is in all of its beautiful, sharp, scan liney glory. What a display! If uh, Master System isn't your thing, then we can turn that off. Switch over to Saturn. And flick that off. And that, my friends, is all she wrote. So, uh, until next time, um, check out the uh, the design documents uh, that I've linked to in the description. Uh, just uh, some schematics and uh, circuit board layouts and um, the Arduino code for the uh, LCD display. It's all in there. Um, Feel free to uh, check it out, build your own if you want, or use it and improve on it, um, whatever you want. So, um, thanks for watching. Thank you, uh, once again, thank you to all my uh, subscribers, new and old. Good to have you on board, and we'll uh, see you next time.